Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at the advanced toggle widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. What is an advanced toggle? Well, it's a page element that lets you switch the display between two different pre-prepared section templates. So, in practice, it can look something like this. This is the toggle, and by flicking the switch, you can see one of the two templates you add. In this case, it's payment plans. You can decide how to style it, the widget has a number of style options to help you, and any section you choose to combine it with, whether a payment plan or something else, will have its own settings as well. And that's an important thing to note, the advanced toggle can work with pretty much anything. For example, this section here is a client list but with carefully selected images and titles, and you can toggle between the two views. By the way, this is the section I'll be breaking down for this tutorial, but the options we cover will help you create a copy of any of these examples, or to make something entirely unique. In any case, the advanced toggle is actually a really fun, versatile element that you can combine with others in the key add-ons collection, whether free or premium, in a multitude of ways. So, with all of that said, let's take a look at how to go about setting up this widget. Head over to the back end. And in the Elementor sidebar, search for the advanced toggle. There it is. Drag it over to the page. And this is what the widget looks like by default. It's very simple. And until we add the section templates we want to show, all we have are the placeholder titles and the toggle switch. To start customizing it, we have the first title field. It's there to help us replace the title text on the left side of the switch, like so. And below that, we have the second title field for replacing the text on the right side. There it is. And with that, my toggle titles are customized. So, after that, we can add the section templates we want to show. We have two options for that, one for each position of the toggle switch. And when you open the first option, you get a drop-down showing all the section templates you have saved. I pre-prepared mine and I made sure to give them names that will make it easy to recognize and select them now. So, for the first section template, I'm going to use Advanced Toggle 1. And there it is. I prepared and styled it separately. And if I try to switch to the second one now, nothing shows up, because I haven't selected anything for the second section template. I'll put this back, and go to select the second template, and that is going to be Advanced Toggle 2. When I've selected that, if I try switching, there we go. We can see both templates. And speaking of those templates, let me briefly show you where you can make them. This is more of an Elementor feature than a key add-ons premium feature, so we won't dwell long on it. So, if you go to your dashboard menu and navigate to templates, you're going to see this Save Template section. This is where you'll be able to see and edit all the templates you've made. You can create templates of pages or sections. In this case, we need the sections. And this here is a list of all my saved section templates. We can take a peek at one of them. This is the Advanced Toggle 1 template. Basically, I made a page where I created sections that I wanted to use with my Advanced Toggle widget. Then, I saved those sections by right-clicking and using the Save as Template option. If I click on this section, we can see that this is actually a client's list widget. That's one from the Key Add-ons Free Widget Collection. Because it's so versatile, I could add some different images and text to create this nifty section. That brings me back to what I mentioned in the introduction. The advanced toggle can create really amazing things when combined with various other widgets by way of these saved templates. Alright, that's all I wanted, let me get back to my work. We already covered most of the content tab by going over the general options. Besides them, there's also the developer tools section. It contains an option that can show the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, making it easy to copy for use elsewhere on your site. Right under that, we have the Help section. This is where you can find some helpful resources, such as the link to the widget's page, the key themes demos, and our Help Center. And that's all we have here, so we can move on to the next step, Style. The first option here is for setting the alignment. That applies just to the toggle. The section below is pretty much fixed. You added it as a template, and if you want to change anything about it, you need to use the template section of your dashboard menu. 
OK, in terms of alignment, we have the usual selection. Left, right, and center, which I'll be using for my plan design. Then we can change the switcher holder background color. That's, let me show you, this band that contains the actual toggle part of the element. I'm going to set a hex code for this. I want a delicate light gray for my background. That's the one. After that, we can pick the tag we want to use for the titles, and this will apply to both the first and the second title. I'll keep the default H5 setting. Then we have the title color, if we want to change that. I'll use the hex code field to turn the titles nearly black. OK. Following that, we have the title typography. In here, you can change things like the font family for the titles. There is a wide selection for you to choose from. You can change the font size. I'll leave mine set to 21 pixels. I'm happy with the look. Then we have the font weight. The default value here is 500, by the way. And after that, the text transform. It lets us turn the text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or keep it normal. There is also the style option, which we can use to change the text style from normal, which is our default, to italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line over, under, or through our text. Finally, we have the line height, letter spacing, and word spacing if we want to add more space either above and below our text or to spread out our letters or words. And that's it for the typography options. This also brings us to the next section, the switcher style. The first option here is for picking how the toggle switch will look. The default setting is rounded and it gets us this look. We can replace it with square, so we have this look. I'll stick with rounded for my design. There. Now, before I show you the next few options, I'm just going to skip down to the background color and set that. And the background color applies to the background of the switch itself. I'm going to set solid black for this. Alright. Now I can go back to the options I skipped and change the button color. That is for this switch part of the toggle. I'll set mine to be plain white. And this is why I set the background color first, so we could see the button now. After that, we have the button border color. I'll set a random color as an example, and then increase the border width. And there. Now this switch, or button, has a border around it. I don't plan on using it, so let me reset this. There. Then, we did background color, so the next option is border color for the toggle background. I'll set, for example, this. And then increase the width so we can see it better. And there's the border now. Alright, I'll reset this. Only, I'll put black for the border color as there is a default 1 pixel border. Although, it may be too thin to easily make out. But, I definitely want it to meld into the switch background and that's why I've set black here. Ok, that's it for the switcher style. Now on to spacing style. For one, we have the switcher margin left right option. It lets us adjust the space separating the toggle from the titles on its left and right. I'm going to set 26 pixels for this. Then we have the switcher margin bottom option. Using it, we can create more space between the toggle part of the element and the templates we selected. I want a bit more breathing room here, so I'll increase it to 56 pixels. Perfect. And finally, we have the switcher holder padding. By increasing it, you can see how the space around the toggle and titles changes so we can add padding around this entire bit of content. However, the padding we add on the sides makes little difference as the content is far shorter than the width of the element. So, since there's no need for me to change the padding on the left or right, I'll click here to delink the fields and then I can set the values only for the top and bottom sides. And those are going to be 34 pixels for both. And that's it, my element is done, so I'll just hit update to save my work. I can check it one last time. Yes, the toggle works, the templates I picked show as they should and when they should. The content and style I wanted to use are both here. So that was the advanced toggle. And now that you know what kind of options it offers, you can take another look at the page that we started from and re-examine the examples you find here.
Now that you have a better grasp of how this widget functions, you should find it easy to recognize how each of these was put together, which allows you to copy the ideas you see here or use them as a starting point for your own design solutions. No matter what direction you choose to go in, we hope you found this tutorial on the advanced toggle widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin helpful, and that you will shortly be on your way to making toggle switches like this for your own site. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching.